a very late time for me to take any lecture but anyhow uh, whatever the schedule has been fixed we have to do that uh, i'll keep my uh, presentation on machine learning in the uh, within my where i will go through the basics of machine learning and additive uh, machine learning and then uh, basics of learning and additive learning you guys might have gone through the machine learning uh, 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 basics by other uh, so person also but here i will try to align this basics with the application in world and not with i hope few people uh, in this uh, presentation or in this mpt are uh, aligned to this area uh, and uh, also i will discuss uh, three or probably four case study in terms of the research we have conducted and the work we have published and is, uh, some of the work is also under public so with that uh, i will provide you an example of how uh, this machine learning can be used in various specifically building of medical technology because uh, my background is basically from welding and uh, additive manufacturing i am restricted to metal based additive manufacturing and for me the metal based additive manufacturing is a upgraded version of welding where we have Use different welding sources like laser, GPW, GMW, and we have incorporated some automation with that. We are able to deposit the material in layer by layer fashion. Anyhow, we will give uh, discuss in more detail in coming slides. Uh, so before that, I will. Uh, I think my one note is also visible to you guys. Yes, sir. Yeah. So basically, if we go with the basics, so we divide the computation method. Uh, we divide the computation method into uh, two basic uh, techniques. We call it as uh, hard computing and uh, soft computing. I hope few of you are aware with this also. Hard computing approach. Uh, if you talk about the hard uh, computing, these are explicit approach means explicit means they follow certain standard uh, mathematical uh, formulas and rules in order to uh, in order to reach towards the output. Okay, output or you can say solution and the solution are solutions are exact and or precise value here in soft computing the solution are not exact but these are close to uh, correct or accurate okay. and in soft computing uh, we don't use any explicit expression or explicit although we follow certain set set of uh, set of steps but there is no explicit rule for uh, soft computing technique and if you go into the detail of this soft computing technique i will refer as sps so we have three major branch of it first one is your evolutionary computation And second is your fuzzy logic. And third one is your AI. In AI you have ML, machine learning, and you have deep learning. In deep learning you have ANL, CNN. If we talk about evolutionary computation, why there are these? evolutionary computation because these are uh, based on human evolution okay so these are 
these work on the nature inspired phenomena or uh, your human so nature inspired phenomena you can have particle swarm optimization artificial bee colony ant colony optimization and in human evolution the prime and the most majorly used is your uh, genetic algorithm okay. so but uh, our interest of today talk is more on this ai or what we can call it as Uh, machine learning so i will discuss upon that okay but broadly they come under the technique and most of the soft computing techniques work on the concept or they search for the solution based on gradient descent approach so although we will not discuss this here but it required at the end of presentation for convenience of uh, the uh, the convenience of the people attending this we can have a discussion over it but these approaches moreover work on gradient descent and especially this deep learning approaches are uh, approaches find their solution using gradient descent approach so let's let's discuss now our presentation so we are more focused on machine learning approach so before that Uh, i have my introduction is already given but let me tell you about our department which has been established in 1959 and we offer btech in mechanical engineering with our student and they have seven mtech program uh, which is specialization in thermal production and uh, design and we have excellent placement for both btech and mtech it is about 82% this year so we have 48 regular faculty different area of But so even we are working with organizations like an MTC, DMR, and DRDS uh, in various R&D projects. Okay. So coming to my introduction, which is already has been discussed. Currently, I am working in uh, working uh, for two project of funding around 50 lakhs, uh, which is uh, sponsored or funded by ARDG and DRDL. We are also working with ISRO in uh, one of the problem we were trying to solve. So before starting with the detail or before going to the more detail, let me give you a uh, introduction or let me catch your attention towards this slide that most which is taken from this machine learning approaches, Wallace uh, and Hess's paper published in Computer University. So uh, most of the engineering and manufacturing problem are data rich, but the knowledge related to that. Techniques or uh, problems are are sparse. So uh, this I would like to explain with the help of additive manufacturing. If we talk about additive manufacturing, uh, this particular technology or particular manufacturing process is catching attention, and um, and with due course of time, lot many papers are getting published in this area. But still, uh, the knowledge uh, related to this technique. Uh, physical metallurgy or metallurgical aspect and mechanical property aspect of this technique is not well explored. People are using the uh, previous knowledge uh, related to uh, related to uh, welding based technique in order to uh, establish the structural property correlation. Uh, but the research is still going on, and we are generating lot of data. We are generating lot of data. So means that. the knowledge about this process is not that much yes we are evolving we are understanding this process in more data manner but uh, but as far as data is concerned significant amount of data is generated and as we know if we have a data with us we can definitely apply machine learning algorithms uh, to to get certain output or to satisfy our certain objective and as i am telling you this machine learning algorithm doesn't care about the physical a uh, physics based relationship between the input and output parameters you can learn from the data pattern and generate the output accordingly you will see that how it is done uh, with the help of our work which has been done with dscc uh, with the parabyte and this so uh, that has been published also uh, so coming to machine learning this uh, i think you might have gone to this uh, diagram this is proposed by ian wood fellow So I suggest you to follow his uh, book, Good Fellow. He is one of the pioneer of deep learning. Uh, 
I am good fellow and there is one more, uh, Michelle is there, Sam Michelle. These are the pioneers, so this diagram is taken from this book uh, by MIT Press, that is deep learning. So, so we have artificial intelligence, which is a bigger cloud, and we have, uh, under this cloud, we have subset called machine learning and deep learning. Coming to the artificial intelligence, it is made up of two words. One is artificial and one is intelligence. So, intelligence is basically uh, uh, analogous to human thinking capability. So what we are doing, we are incorporating that intelligence into the machine artificially with the help of certain if then rules, with the help of certain logic. Okay. So, we are artificially mimicking the human intelligence. Okay. And coming to the uh, Machine learning, machine learning is a subset of AI which utilizes statistical techniques. So, machine learning is a uh, uh, utilizes statistics. So, if you want to uh, incorporate machine learning in your research work or in your academics, you have to go through the uh, basic concept of statistics. Then only I uh, will suggest you to jump to machine learning. So basically, it utilizes statistical techniques which enables the machine to improve. Uh, performance towards any task. Okay. Then comes the deep learning. So if you talk about deep learning, so in deep learning we are using layer type data. So we have layer by layer data. Okay. We are feeding numerical or we are feeding image data. So in ANN you can use both uh, numerical and image data. But CNN that is convolutional neural network takes image data only. And this CNN is nowadays in high on demand, but the computation cost associated with CNN is very high. How CNN is in on demand, we will see that in the coming slide. So, so, coming to the introduction to machine learning or basics, so as we know, learning is any any process with which we gain knowledge and we improve the per, our performance. Uh, especially if you say, if you consider while uh, walking certain stair with step. If you are, uh, if you are uh, held down in that staircase step, so that data will be fed in your mind and from next time onward, that ex with the past experience, you will come to know that at this particular step in the staircase, uh, there is a problem, so you can improve your performance, which is particularly climbing up or climbing down that staircase. So the data is coming from that experience. So learning is any process in which we improve our uh, performance. So basically, what is said that human learn from uh, human learn from is experience whether that experience are good or bad based on that human learn and uh, avoid that mistakes to be happen again and again. So coming to the machine learning algorithm, so basically it is a study of algorithms that will improve the performance e at certain task e with experience e. So the task can be anything. Uh, whether it's a spam or not, and experience is data, and performance is basically termed based on accuracy or certain performance metrics. Are there. Similar. Huh? We will discuss that in later. So, let me uh, explain this definition in more detail uh, with the help of an example. So, let's take the spam classifier example. So as we all know, uh, in the beginning of this email, uh, uh, when this email thing comes into market, so we have different email uh, portal like Gmail, Yahoo, Ready, AOL, lot of. But with due course of time, only Gmail was able to survive because that Google team was able to deploy this machine learning approach to classify their spam and not spam data. Uh, what they did, they, they applied supervised machine learning, supervised machine learning, and with that help, they with, and they, they deployed with their data analysts to label certain inbox as spam and not spam. So this was especially done due to two reasons in order to avoid fraud. Okay. So what they are doing, uh, their data analysts, they label the email containing the word like lottery, win, uh, bonus, uh, credit card, or like that. And they they are able to they are able to label these emails into uh, spam, and remaining emails are classified as 
So what they did, the data, the experience is coming from classifying the email as spam and not spam. And the approach they have applied is classification based machine learning algorithm where spam was classified as one and now the spam is classified as zero. And the performance was evaluated based on the accuracy. Uh, they targeted the higher accuracy means better performance of your machine learning model. Uh, so as you see uh, now in your Gmail, so most of the upstart mail will go to your spam. But sometimes it happens that some important mail also went to spam. So now this Gmail has provided you the provision where you can report that email has got spam. So you are also acting as a data analyst where you are labeling that uh, that email as not spam and it is also uh, their data set is, has been continuously getting updated and their model performance is increasing so this is the this is the uh, spam inbox of uh, email id so you can see in the official email id this offers okay unnecessary uh, manuscript submission that's the thesis award. These, these are and some promotional email. These are classified as uh, uh, spam. So if some important mail is also coming in this spam, so you can definitely label as not spam and from most time on that type of mail will not come. You can try this on your inbox also. So where we can use machine learning. The machine learning can be used where human expertise is not available, especially in a space application. Take the example of navigation Mars, with this Mars rover. Uh, then also uh, in speech recognition. Okay, so the the main the major example of this speech recognition is your Alexa. Then this uh, machine learning is significantly used in the field of medicine and genomics. Uh, where in genomics you are able to classify diseases with the help of images. Okay, so cancer and not not cancer. And uh, during the COVID period, you might came across the news that uh, some IITs have developed a model which uses the X-ray of lung to detect cancer and not cancer. Although that model <coughs> will never declare those are some promotional activities. But yes, uh, in Countries like US, Japan, and China, they have strong machine learning model where they can detect cancer uh, with the help of an image. And coming to this genomics uh, medicine, so this 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 one played a significant uh, advantage uh, to our current generation uh, with a uh, the prime example is the development of your COVID medicine, so uh, COVID vaccination. So uh, uh, if the things were would have happened way 20 30 years back so the probably the vaccination development might not be that accurate or it would have taken more amount of time but with the help of machine learning algorithm they were able to develop machine with a uh, vaccination within a period of uh, year one year and two so our advancement in computation and our advancement in machine learning algorithm helped develop that medicine also and recently uh, they were able to develop the medicine for uh, cancer but that is more on trial phase so coming to the machine learning paradigm so if you see your traditional programming we have a data you take any programming language java C++, whatever so you have data you have to develop a program that will be fed into computer and you will get an answer in machine learning the paradigm is quite different you have data you already know the output output will be in terms of accuracy because we are not looking for a precise solution we are looking for an accurate solution which is close to uh, which will be having a uh, minimum error minimum error okay so we will feed that data we will expect the output and we will apply some statistical machine learning based technique in our computer which will result in the higher accuracy we will select that particular program okay so this is what our machine learning paradigm looks like so if you see the application of machine learning we have uh, machine learning in image recognition uh, where we can uh, scan the faces of human and we can detect uh, the details okay then medical diagnosis stock market prediction people are 
this Kubera or uh, you can take Apple stock. They are using this machine learning algorithm to predict the next day uh, share and share market ups and down. Okay. Also, they are able to detect the fraud detection, online fraud detection. They are helping in usual pers uh, personal assistant with the help of AR and VR, email spam, self-driving car. The prime example is your Tesla. Uh, this Tesla cars are using CNN model, and uh, you are, might be hearing the news sometimes this Tesla car gets crashed and all this happens because this model is constantly updating. So. Uh, if that Tesla car will be deployed in Indian road, so the situation will be totally different. They have to update with their model, they need more accuracy because here the traffic rules are bit different. Okay. Likewise, the traffic congestion prediction. Uh, if you if you take your Google map and in your Google map you have a uh, you have an option that you can uh, change the time. Let's say you can change today's uh, uh, 28th on 30th. At 9 a.m., if you want to see the traffic at particular place, let's say Central Secretary in Delhi, it will predict that traffic that this much that traffic you will encounter during. And mostly that uh, uh, that observations were quite correct. Then speech recognition, uh, we have Alexa. Okay. So coming to the machine learning uh, algorithm, so we classify the machine learning algorithm into three. Uh, category supervised machine learning, unsupervised machine learning, and reinforcement learning. And in supervised le machine learning, we have two uh, major uh, categorization. We call it as classification based and regression based approach. Uh, uh, both approach have their different performance metrics. If you talk about regression approach, we use R2 square, adjusted R square. Uh, root mean square, uh, different different uh, metrics to evaluate the performance of our model. In classification, we are moreover, uh, we moreover rely on accuracy, F1 score, uh, precision, and, we have and in supervised machine learning, we need a human expertise where we can label the data, uh, input data and output data, and then we apply certain algorithm to get the output. But in unsupervised learning, machine learning, we are not able to label the data and we are not sure about the output. So in that case, uh, we apply, there are certain algorithms which will help to understand the data pattern and they will be able to cluster the data accordingly. The prime example is your uh, priori approach and this is used in your supermarket. We will see how in supermarket they are cleverly using this approach. Uh, so if you talk about supervised machine learning, so we have an input data uh, which is an apple. Uh, we have output that it should predict an apple. We apply the machine learning algorithm. Next time when we will feed a fruit, let's say an apple, it will. Now, if you talk about unsupervised learning, so you have different different fruits here. Uh, although we can label it, but for the understanding, uh, we are taking a simple example. Uh, but these are not that simple, uh, but for understanding purpose, we are considering. We have apple, banana, and uh, peach. So we are not able to label the data, and we are not sure about the output. So what I will do, I will apply unsupervised machine learning approach like gaming, clustering, a priori. And it will cluster that it will understand the pattern of data. So it will understand that Apple is having certain feature, and it will cluster Apple based on that feature, feature based on the feature, and banana based on that feature. But based on the accuracy only, it will be able to do that because Apple and the peach share the more over the same feature. So sometimes a peach can be categorized as an Apple. So it depends upon the accuracy. So this type of a model, unsupervised model are used in supermarket. Let me give you a, an example. So let me give you an example. The, the major uh, example or the main example of this is your supermarket where we are not sure what particular person is coming into the supermarket, what he or she will purchase. 
but based on the trend of the incoming uh, customers they are able to develop a an algorithm and they cluster it so if you see in supermarket the all fruits and every uh, uh, costly fruits and ice creams are kept at the entrance and if you are going to buy an grocery so the grocery will be kept at the end so the grocery is the most most important uh, uh, purchase of our uh, of of a house husband or housewife but they are keeping the grocery at the end so and they are keeping some unnecessary product in the beginning so while reaching toward the grocery you you will pick up some unnecessary uh product and it will increase your bill and also at the near the bill counter they keep the chocolate at lower high so that kids can pick up that chocolate and especially if you go to the supermarket they are keeping kinder joy at lower uh, high so people uh, the kid will pick up that kinder joy and uh, he or she will eat it and you have to pay the bill so basically based on this front they are keeping it okay because usually when you enter supermarket so it was kept in that uh, uh, in food basket and all but at the end at bill counter you have to uh, uh, keep him out and he will see or she will pick up that chocolate uh, uh, next is your reinforcement learning so reinforcement learning is significantly nowadays is used in the advanced area of, of robotics where robots are teach to uh, to perform certain tasks so uh, initially the reinforcement learning was applied to the games especially chess games in order to understand this reinforcement learning we should need the help of this picture where this dog is an agent and the dog owner is the environment so she will throw this stick and dog will fetch to the action the environment will perform the action and dog will observe and the dog will pick up that and based on his uh, based on his pick, pick up this stick he will the dog will get the reward so but what what the dog uh, what complexity this dog will encounter sometimes the environment will take the throw so the due course of time that agent will observe whether she is throwing the stick or she is taking it and based on that uh, data or observation the dog will learn the agent will learn and accordingly it will perform action to receive maximum reward so, so this is what our reinforcement learning look like so for so the talk about machine learning so i will try to explain machine learning Uh, how we approach machine learning with this uh, engineering design diagram uh, this is a, a very a common diagram we use uh, during any design problem whether you are designing any engineering model so first of all we should have a clear uh, description of any problem so after describing that problem we will be able to identify the important factors related to that problem and then we will propose a model which will help us to solve that problem so we will collect that model in terms of the important factor and we will finally reach towards the conclusion but in between if our conclusion are not coming correct we will manipulate the solution and we will further confirm the solution and then we will deploy so this this uh, gray box represent the iteration where we are Uh, after describing our problem, our next task is to collect the data, and thoroughly we have to refine the model in order to reach the outcome. So, so same thing we are doing in machine learning. So, machine learning is quite analogous to this engineering design approach, which never changes. It will remain same. We can use different, different high, uh, higher order terms in order to define that, but. If you consider the machine learning approach, first of all, once I have defined the problem, I will start gathering the data, collect the data, and I will prepare the data. I will prepare the data. I will propose the model. Means to use the model, I will train. I will train. I will evaluate. Then I will do the hyperparameter. Based on evaluation, if I am not getting that result, I will perform hyperparameter training, which will be. The manipulation of model, which is equivalent to your equation, and finally the prediction, and finally I will 
deploy moreover this machine learning approach is similar to your uh, the conventional engineering design approach you should if you are more thorough about the engineering design approach there is no problem in applying machine learning approach because this coding and all you can learn with your course of time so coming to the why we are using machine learning especially in manufacturing domain so first of all we need to understand what are the challenge we face in the manufacturing domain so as the global competitiveness in market is increasing new and newer process are coming people should adopt that advanced manufacturing technology easily and that advanced manufacturing technology can be deployed uh, keeping the sustainability in mind the feasibility of that process in mind and we should utilize that uh, advanced knowledge we should manage the information where our ai system can definitely help and day by day we are having a dynamic business environment it's competitive environment either you should uh, uh what in research field it is called publish or perish so same thing is happening here so you have to make your uh, deploy the advancement so as you can see the old companies are also moving towards this they are deploying machine learning iiot this technique so yes machine learning can be a possible candidate for a process optimization in manufacturing monitoring and control so before me uh, Uh, Dr. Sakya was there. He is more over into this monitoring and fault diagnosis, which is a critical component. Where we can use machine learning a little bit. So, so what benefit our machine learning approach? So, with the advanced manufacturing approach, we need sustainability, uh, with deployment of AI-based system, flexibility. So, these all feature are uh, these all feature are uh, are the highlight of your machine learning. So, you will better understand with the help of this table. So, in manufacturing requirement, we need uh, ability to handle a high dimensional problem with uh, high dimensional data. So, high dimensional problem has the number of machine learning uh, the the. Input parameter is equivalent to your dimension. If you are having three input parameter, we call that as three D machine learning problem. If you are having a four input parameter, it can be computed as four dimension. So in a machine, in a manufacturing process, we have multiple inputs, so it's a high dimensional problem. And with a high dimensional data set, just so that. So, then it should have a complex ability to reduce the complex nature of the result. So, as machine learning basically drive the pattern from the existing data and the future data. So, the algorithm is not much bothered about the complex nature. Okay, and it should capture the market demand. It should be flexible. So, yes, uh, machine learning can technique derive and give output from the. Uh, Uh, previous data, but the new data will come to that machine learning algorithm is adaptable to accommodate that data and can be tuned to get better accuracy with newer data input. Now coming to the machine learning in welding, so uh, as we all are familiar, uh, most of you are teaching, uh, uh, maybe teaching BTEC students. Uh, welding is process of joining of two dissimilar metal non metal or nowadays people are able to join thermal plastic process of joining two dissimilar material with or without application of with or without application of aggression pressure the process back chain so so back chain In order to develop such a structural component we have different different uh, welding technique. But majorly, these are uh, non-conductive beams, fusion beams, high-energy beam beams, and uh, and polystyrene welding. But different categorization are available. So you can categorize the process based on your needs. Uh, here we will be explaining the machine learning algorithm in terms of fusion stir welding. So this particular process is very close to my heart. My master's and PhD is on fusion stir welding. This this comes under the solid stir welding process, which utilizes the uh, concept of fusion welding, where two in fusion welding we are uh, rubbing the two same surfaces. So same concept was utilized, but With different uh, tweaking, and this process was developed in Sweden by the Welding Institute in Cambridge. Uh, uh, and this process particularly revolutionized the uh, joining of uh, aluminium, especially 
there is one more there is company by uh, origin i think from amazon they, they have this concept to do this as a new technique so uh, so if you think of if you consider the working principle of fsw technique so it, it utilizes a rotational uh, rotating tool with the uh, shoulder and this uh, rotating tool is plunged inside the joint line or pain circle So, so this is the joint line where I want to do welding. And this tool is rotated. And once it plunges inside the material, I will uh, keep the tool there for a, a certain interval of time. We call it as gel time. And once after a certain gel time, I will allow this tool to yes, go along the welding direction or along the line. It will result in the formation of the joint. And this joint is developed using Easier plastic deformation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the IDK desk. IDK desk. And fine grain structure, which generally exhibit a good mechanical property, and there is no melting involved in this process. That's why a solid state welding process. So, if there is no melting involved this in this process, so whatever the this advantage available or whatever the this advantage encountered due to uh, uh, due to this uh, conventional process like porosity solidification cracking especially in aluminum alloy can be avoided so if you see your tool is having shoulder and pin and it serves two three purpose first of all this pin will stir the material from here to there so stirring will happen the shoulder will keep the material intact and also it will help in heating so it will provide the frictional heating and after that the heating is generated by steel plastic deformation so uh, the tool design Sir, is it's very it's important in one of the important jab, jab, criteria uh, but if you see the dimensionality of the uh, uh, friction stress welding probe Yeah, so the friction stress welding process is influenced by tool design, mm -hmm. by material, by shear, by machine. Sorry. To talk about tool design, so pin okay. angle, pin profile, shoulder diameter, mm -hmm. tool material are the important parameters. To talk about mm -hmm. material thickness, the melting point is an important criteria. Thickness is an important criteria. Mechanical properties. Likewise, if you talk about machine, so rotational speed, transfer speed, the upper limit and lower limit of the rotation. And the important criteria which governs the mechanical property, which is steel strength, steel strength, percentage, foundation. So considering the dimensionality of this problem, uh, we implemented machine learning algorithm to predict steel uh, strength and tensile strength of the uh, copper, pure copper and its alloy. Okay. Uh, so what we did, we we what we did, we 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 have taken the data of 119 experimental data set from different different literature and we applied four classification based algorithm and we before applying the classification based approach we did binarization then we have converted ubs into 1 and 0 so the criteria is if the uts is above 80% of the uh, base material strength so we consider uh, Considered it as one, and rest is considered as zero. So, uh, so these are the uh, these are the uh, input parameters we got. So, if you consider thickness, tool, travel speed, shoulder diameter, pin diameter, tool till, uh, these are the input parameters, and the output was UTS. So, if you see here, tool rotation we have 119, travel speed 119, but for shoulder diameter we have 66 data points, 64, 54. And 113. So this data set should be this data set should be subjected to data cleaning and data pre-processing. So what we did, we need all the data in uh, 119 data for all the input. So we we subjected the data set to imputation and we replaced the null values with mean. Okay. 
and we also uh, try to understand the Pearson correlation between the UTS and various input parameters. So all parameters uh, show the negative uh, uh, influence means the increasing of thickness will result in poor UTS. But the travel speed has shown the positive correlation. So based on that, uh, we applied four. Uh, Four machine learning algorithm. One was KNN, that is k nearest neighbor. Then decision tree, then decision tree with information gain, and finally artificial neural network. So the we, so this is the performance based on the accuracy. So the neural network gave us a higher accuracy of 94 percent, and we uh, we valid we cross check with plotting the curve uh, between loss and epochs for training and test data. Okay, then we develop the confusion metrics in order to get the other uh, other uh, performance metrics criteria, which is precision, recall, and F1 score. So uh, based on that, we are able to uh, conclude that our neural networks gave us the good result, and after that, Gini uh, in decision tree with information gain. So this work has been published in manufacturing letters. Uh, so that's a very good journal. Uh, you can refer to this for more detail. Uh, next work we have did is the prediction of uh, uh, weed profile in activated brick building. So before going into the detail, what we have done first of all, uh, let me give you how this activated brick building uh, works. So if you consider your brick welding process, so where we are, uh, where welding is performed by heat. Uh, from the arc which is struck between the tungsten electrode and the base metal and that heat will result in the melting of the joint line and finally melting and solidification will result in uh, joining of two metal. Uh, but if you consider a TIG welding process, so the TIG welding process has lower productivity because this welding is limited to low space, lower thickness. And if you want to go for higher thickness, let's say this is a higher thickness, then you want to join. Uh, yeah. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Ah, uh, hello. Sir, please proceed to ask questions. Sir, are you waiting for your question? No, actually, sir, are you done any optimization? In friction steel welding, residual stresses is the major problem, sir. Uh, residual stress is the problem in welding. In, in, ah, it's yes. not about friction steel welding, it's about welding because the thermal heating and contraction will result in the residual stresses. Uh, but friction steel welding is having comparatively lesser as compared to the other, but they definitely have residual stress. Okay. Is it compared to lesser than thick welding? Yeah, definitely, because in thick welding the temperature is quite high enough, so the, the solidification and encounter is significantly high as compared to the welding process. Okay, okay. So if you talk about activated pit welding process, yeah. So as I was telling you, if you are going for a higher thickness welding, let's say this one, with the help of pit uh, uh, welding process, uh, with the help of pit welding process, so you have to perform multiple passes, multiple passes. Yes. Multiple, yes. The, this multiple passes will uh, will be a time consuming process and also you are supplying an additional similar material in between this in order to fill that. So uh, in order to join a thicker plate, basically you, you need significant amount of time. So what people have done, they, they come across with this activated thick welding process. Uh, uh, it was developed somewhere in around 2004 in Austria. So what they have done, uh, they have done, uh, uh, they are able to join the thicker section. They are able to join the thicker section 
if you consider this thick section without the preparation of group and in a single part they were able to uh, join this thicker section so during my phd in our lab we were able to join 16 mm uh, uh, stainless steel plate without the preparation of any group so so what is the fundamental uh, uh, phenomenon that is uh, taking place behind that is we are what we are doing in the joint line we are applying activated flux so you can see here activated fluxes are applied which are basically uh, oxide based flux uh, uh, can you please mute your mic i am having a disturbance uh, so you have silicon dioxide aluminum dioxide you can use molybdenum dioxide so different different fluxes are available and the combination of fluxes can be used so what is happening uh, with the presence of these fluxes uh, the surface Uh, tension gradient uh, with temperature uh, became positive so what will happen the material initially the material was the pool is moving in this direction the material is moving in this direction so it reverses the marganese flow and as the marganese flow, flow reverses so so it will move the material to higher depth and also with the presence of the oxide fluxes the the arc become more constricted so the constricted arc will have higher heat input as compared to the dispersed arc so with the help of reverse marganese flow and the arc constriction people were able to join thicker plate in a single pass without any joint preparation with the help of activated flux so if you consider this problem uh, of static so so uh, when you are going for a full depth of penetration so your well bead will look like this well bead will look like this so this is your depth of penetration d and this is your width so if your depth of penetration is very high so your width will be less okay so so the bead profile will look like something like this okay it may shift toward one side uh, so so the bead profile prediction is very important which include depth of penetration width and d by w ratio so uh, uh, so uh, so this d by w ratio depth of penetration and width of penetration is dependent upon voltage material current uh, travel speed gas flow rate electrode gap these are the parameter related to welding apart from that this Uh, d by w ratio or depth of penetration is also dependent upon the flux what is the particular combination of flux what is the uh, what different type of flux may lead to the development of full penetration uh, so keeping this uh, input parameter in mind we we attempted to predict uh, the bead profile which is depth of penetration width and d by w ratio so what we did we we followed the uh, seven steps of machine learning we collected 300 data sets we visualized sir in, the, sir in this process arc is sub, uh, merged inside the flux no, no, it's, it's not submerged okay okay so so what is happening here uh, we we uh, did data pre processing uh, we check for null value we change the null value we encoded the categorical data what is that we will see now and we split it and we applied random forest modeling so uh, the random forest model is supposed to have is one of the best model uh, because it does not require any hyper parameter tuning okay uh, so so if you see the correlation matrix if you see here penetration so uh, the penetration is having a positive correlation with flux it is having a positive correlation with sample thickness likewise with voltage current uh, speed so what we have seen that we have three null values for voltage and one values for gas flow rate so uh, based on that uh, what we have uh, seen that we need to uh, impute this null value so we have imputed and also if you can see here uh, the flux 
मोर ओवर अ केमिकल फॉर्मूला लेट्स से थर्टी परसेंट सिलिकन डाइऑक्साइड ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑलिबिटन डाइऑक्साइड तो इट्स अ इट्स अ कैटेगोरिकल डेटा सेट सो वी नीड टू एनकोड इट्स कैटेगोरिकल डेटा सेट इन टू न्यूमेरिकल डेटा सेट सो फॉर दैट एनकोडिंग वी अप्लाइड लेवल इनकोडिंग सो हेयर यू कैन सी दिस इज वॉट दिस इज हाउ अवर डेटा सेट लुक्स लाइक ओके दिस इज द फ्लक्स कंपोजिशन सो वेन आई अप्लाइड द एनकोडिंग so i i was able to convert it into to a numerical data set so once all columns has been changed into a numerical data set we applied random forest machine learning and here we have applied regression based machine learning approach and uh, and uh, classification based machine learning approach so regression based machine learning approach performance metrics was evaluated by root mean square error mean square error mean absolute error adjusted r square and also so there here we can see the r square values for uh, uh, for permutation and which is significantly high uh, which is about which is close to 80% 85% but for d by w ratio it was quite lower okay and we have seen the effect of uh, feature importance means the, how significantly a particular feature will play a role uh, for the prediction so current was having significantly high importance and likewise speed voltage and finally if you can see here the gas flow rate and material grade which is different different uh, ms steel grade we have chosen uh, they they are having a lower uh, influence in machine learning algorithm then after that we have applied uh, classification based approach so our classification based approach gave us a very good accuracy and this classification so from here we can see that a classification based approach was much more uh, better as compared to the regression based approach and uh, and the criteria for classification is if the depth of penetration is equal to thickness is given as 1 and if d by w ratio is uh, greater than or equal to 0.8 it is given as 1 so based on that we, we did the binarization and here we can see the conclusion matrix so uh, so uh, we have very uh, very few uh, type 1 and type 2 error okay uh and based on that we are able to uh, check the precision sensitivity and s1 score of our classification model and uh, so the precision uh, and the sensitivity and s1 score is quite good for penetration and by the way ratio which is quite acceptable so then we are we check the performance using a probabilistic curve by roa roc roc curve uh, This is receiver operator curve, uh, and the area under the curve uh, predicts the uh, accuracy of the model. So here you can see the area under the curve for uh, depth of penetration and d by w ratio is significantly high, which is close to 0.91. Uh, so the this model was significantly good uh, for prediction of the deep profile, especially the classification based approach. And also with the help of our classification based approach, uh, we check the we we have checked the importance of the feature. So here it was giving a good importance to material grade, also the gas flow rate. So from here uh, we we were able to conclude uh, that our model was quite classification model is quite better as far as the regression based model is uh, 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 here. And uh, this this paper is also uh, recently day before yesterday it was accepted. So these were some conclusions that we got from our model, which I have already discussed that our classification model was able to uh, outperform regression model and we were able to correlate the influence of process parameter on the profile in better way as compared to um, the regression based model. And we, what we have observed that the heat input, which is Vi by S, was significantly affected by the depth of penetration apart from the sub composition. The next work we have done, we have done this work in collaboration with uh, uh, ISRO, and this work is more in auditing manufacturing. So they, uh, this problem came to us that, uh, uh, particularly in 3D printing of aluminium uh, 50% silicon or aluminium 50% silicon where X is 
ஒரு <laughs> Uh, but the the thing is that the centering and casting process takes a significant amount of time and in order to get the complex we need to machine it also so which will result in material waste also so what was the thought that why not to bring this component using uh, 3d printing especially the powder based printing approach so what we have done uh, uh, i will tell you but before that let's understand what is additive manufacturing so additive manufacturing is layer by layer deposition of a material uh, and layer by layer deposition of material and that objects were made from a 3d model data okay and once the 3d model data is supplied to a machine it is applied in layer by layer fashion and with the help of printer head or nozzle it is deposited in layer by layer fashion so probably with this uh, youtube link uh, i think i will be able to communicate uh, more better so i hope this screen is visible to you guys yes sir so here you can see first of all we will generate a 3d cad model and we will slice that 3d cad model to different to different layer and this slice layer are transferred to our 3d printer so the first slice slicing was done for the bottom surface so we have powder spread over this uh, bed and now with the help of laser i am selectively melting the powder at the required location then again the next layer of powder will be uh, spread and again the laser will melt likewise this process will be repeated again and again and again and the plate form is brought out and the material is deposited in the layer by layer and finally we are able to make the uh a uh, which can be directly de- deployed into uh, manufacturing directly deployed in the application or after post processing can be deployed so so we utilize this so the pc consider the component we have a cad model and it will be size so uh, same technique we have used uh, so uh, so uh, before that if you consider your additive manufacturing this process is significantly uh, uh, recently is catching pace with the technological advancement however the this process comes along with higher cost okay and you need need a trained labor for this and uh, the a simple uh, less uh, certification system will cost you around crore so the cost associated with the operate setup cost is very high also the operational cost is very high so the margin for the material wastage is very less so 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 the first the driving factor which required which resulted in the deployment of machine learning in additive manufacturing is cost it is significantly high so we have to drop down that cost in uh, reducing the number of experiments then also the time so if we are able to uh, print the component in lesser amount of time with lesser cost then only we can replace the component uh, uh, with the component which is fabricated by conventional manufacturing and then the complexity the complexity is associated with the design the complexity is associated with the parameter selection so yes machine learning can definitely uh, help us to address this how we will see next slide so this is a prediction made by the human uh, so initially this am technology were significantly costlier in 2013 now the cost is decreasing and the amount of the production is increasing and uh, the amount of the component or the uh position that is made per hour is significantly increasing uh so uh, if you see here uh, in powder bed region we are first 
adding a layer of powder and we are selecting selectively melting that powder layer uh, and which will be result in the fusion of the powder particle and we will get a uh, solid layer so here you can see how this cylindrical uh, surfaces are first layer by selective uh, melting of the powder and finally uh, by layer by layer deposition you are able to get a solid shape so if you consider this aluminum silicon alloy as i told you it's, uh, 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 it has very good wear resistance thermal resistance coefficient corrosion resistance so it is used for a thermal management system in packaging industry and in space especially for space long cycle so what we did uh, we printed this uh, test coupon of uh, 10 mm sheet sheet uh, for a series of uh, because as this is a new material very few literature is available for this particular alloy so we we really printed this because we want to uh, see up to what process and the component dense component may the component is having uh, uh, Component which is having uh, very less porosity, so we we were targeting about 99.5 percent density. Uh, so we printed for a variety of power and speed high system, but we kept same strategy constant. Okay, and we check the density with the help of a uh, uh, density meter, which works on the Archimedes principles. So somewhere down the line, we we uh, printed uh, around 350. Also here, rather than taking data from the literature, we generated in-house data. And uh, so, so uh, as we know, the in additive manufacturing process, uh, there still the physics-based relationship are might not uh, quite well established. But here, what we call find out to be machine learning, which uh, does not require any complex input-output relationship, learn from the data in order to do the prediction. So. So keeping that in mind, what we have done, we we printed the test coupon, we generated the data, we applied different different machine learning algorithms. This is decision tree, random forest, and a tree. And we check the uh, uh, we check the performance of all the models. So if you see uh, the working of a decision tree model, so it is a nested FL FL statement. So if you see here, uh, the, it will start from a root. So generally, a tree has a root at the bottom and it will grow upwards. But a decision tree will have a root at the top and it will grow downward. Okay. So first of all, we have a root node. That the first criteria is salary is uh, at least fifty uh, thousand dollar. So if yes, so. Uh, Then we have to check another precise criteria which can be a commute or which can be an incentive. If no, we decline the offer. So this terminal node will be called as a beef node. So if commute is more than uh, an hour, yes, then you can decline the offer. If no offers of free coffee, he has accepted the offer. So based on this precise criteria, I am able to develop a tree. Okay, so and we have different different decision nodes based on which we will uh, we will generate the tree. And uh, if you consider your random forest model, so it's a diving uh, based you know some by model which uses different different uh, decision tree. And finally, all the results of decision tree were calculated and the voting were done and the majority of the votes were given. So here, if you can see, we have divided. Uh, Uh, a random forest, which is a collection of trees into three trees. So two trees are uh, predicting as it as an apple, and one tree is predicting as it as a banana. So the majority of voting is of apple. So final prediction will be made on apple. So if we consider all the error and noise, finally it will provide you a data which is having lesser noise and better accuracy. So we establish a correlation between the prediction and uh, uh, between the input and output parameter, which is our densification. And uh, we have developed a neural network model uh, with this is the architecture of neural network model where we do uh, four hidden layer, one input layer, and one output layer, and the activation function we have kept value. And uh, so this this is a uh, Slight understanding of your neural network 
so it is believed that the information in human brain is uh, human information in human brain is carried to the neuron so a neuron will be having a central to which the information is coming we have a cell body where the information is processed and we have a front to which the information the process information is made proper with the help of synapses this information is transfer to another and drive so it will uh, another neuron so it is a collection of neurons so this this biological uh, this biological concept is uh, is analog is analog is made equal to a mathematical model where we have a input we assign the weight we have a summing junction where all input comes from the we have a activation function uh, which will uh, which will activate this input and it will be uh, compared with a threshold value and finally the output will be given in terms of uh, one and zeros okay so this is basically a simple architecture of your uh, artificial neural network and we have feed forward and backward propagation neural network generally we uh, we work on backward propagation neural network model because it provide lesser error so here we see uh, if we see the distribution of densification so at lower power also we are getting higher densification and higher power also and also we are getting uh, higher densification at different distances similarly uh, for different higher distances so the window the process window is spread across the large uh, large range of the parameters so we cannot We are not very much sure which parameter will result as a good identification. So our target was to uh, finalize the uh, uh, parameter which will provide us uh, the uh, which will provide us a uh, high identification. So this is the uh, this is the uh, uh, performance of our random constraint decision tree model. So our decision tree model. Predicted provided us a good accuracy, and we have checked the, uh, 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 the accuracy with the help of uh, prediction versus actual value plot. So, in case of uh, decision tree, all the values are overlapping real value and prediction value, but in few regions the overlap is not quite good. But in random forest, the overlap is significantly different. Uh, here, 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 so which confirms the accuracy of both the models. And with the help of feature importance, we are able to predict that it can be significantly affecting the identification of power and high distance. We developed our decision tree, so the, which is start from a uh, uh, which is start from a uh, root node where it can be less than or equal to 25. If yes, then if power is less than 25, if yes, like that it is making the decision uh, to predict the identification with higher accuracy. Uh, the 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 significance of here that we we experimentally validated our decision our machine learning model. So what we did we trained our model for three data points. Uh, so these three data points were not there in our machine learning model. So for these three data points we have printed three test coupons and we measure the density of 98.64, 98.08, 98.60. And our decision tree and random forest and network predicted this values accordingly. And then we we measure the uh, average percentage error. So for all the model, the percentage error is below one percent. And if you see, if you see our neural network uh, was having a lower range of percentage error. So from here we we were able to see that our neural network outperformed both decision tree and random forest model. And this work uh, uh, we were able to do with we would like to acknowledge uh, material entity group uh, ISRO. Uh, where we were able to do this work with them, and this work has been published in Journal of Material Engineering Performance. Then another work, this is a work done by my PhD scholar, where we implemented machine learning for prediction of mechanical property of wire arc conducting manufacturing process. So wire arc conducting manufacturing process. Uh, we should first. I will give you a brief introduction of this process, and we will move forward. So, the wire arc welding manufacturing process is inspired from your welding, where a welding arc is acted as a heat source, and the heat is of material, which is a wire, which is deposited, melted, and deposited in the 
layer by layer construction so we so we we can use uh, a different building power source which is gas metal arc building construction arc building and coal metal transfer and this material is deposited so this this wall of stainless steel three one six has been printed in our facility only. So, uh, if you consider your wire art additive manufacturing, it comes under the category of metal, metal-based additive manufacturing, which is additive manufacturing. So, if you consider other metal-based additive manufacturing, they offer low deposition rate and they they offer significantly high cost and material wastage is significant and the size of the component is limited but if you consider van which offer you higher deposition rate and the material utilization is 100% there is no wastage whatever you are supplying is completely melted and deposited it reduces the return and can be helpful to develop a component with lower complexity so uh, what brought wire art additive manufacturing into market so especially if you see aerospace industry uh, this is a buy to fly ratio so buy means whatever the raw material we are buying and whatever the raw raw material after processing is uh, subjected to the flying component so if you see in airplanes and aero engine if you consider the green line of aluminum so the purchase is somewhere around 500 and the whatever and below 100 cost is material is uh, is utilized so the loss of 400 unit is there and this buy to fly ratio is significantly low somewhere around 5 to so whatever we are buying whatever we are buying is significantly low so uh, with the help of them what people were able to do that they, they were able to increase this uh, buy to fly ratio so uh, uh, that buy to fly, they are they were able to increase this buy to fly ratio so, uh, so the application this advantage in aerospace industry uh, has the attraction of the people and this, this process now significantly used in um, the development of large size components in various structural and aerospace applications so the um, examples are uh, this is a target 3D printer which is a uh, robotic arm based 3D printer so this is the complete rocket shell printed with the help of this process and this is done in the startup called relativity space in us so they are, they, they are able to print a complete rocket station within 60 days which usually takes a time of uh, somewhere around uh, 6 to 8 months. Uh, so uh, recently they were able to launch this 3D printed rocket also. Uh, some good experimental trials happened. Uh, and they are printing the rocket shells for Tesla also. This is a van color, uh, which is a wire arc additive manufacturer propeller in Ram Lab, Netherlands, Netherlands. This propeller is fabricated by this process, and this process, this, uh, this propeller has been deployed here in real time application in Bayman's trial and it is tested. Uh, Dr. Ria and his team were able to do that. Uh, we are closely working with him also. Uh, he is mentoring us for this one. In hook developed by VAM. This is a bridge which is printed and fabricated by VAM and uh, in Amsterdam and it is inaugurated by their team. Uh, uh, this is an excavator arm which is printed using VAM at Oak Ridge Laboratory and, and it is and this is deployed in real time application after machining and printing. So this clearly shows that how VAM is significantly used for the fabrication of glass components. So in this direction we are also exploring if you see the component of VAM. So a VAM setup includes a welding power source, a robotic control or a special purpose machine and a wire feeding system if you are using a tick based power source. So where our expertise lies that if you consider uh, if you consider printing a large component using VAM, to include the development of optimum bead profile and development of small structure, microstructural characterization, and the development of PPR for the small structure, then path planning, and finally the printing of the component. So uh, we are working in this area. We are we are exploring this window also. Uh, uh, so in this line, what we have done, 
uh, what we have done we try to predict because uh, to develop this pqr to develop this pqr significant amount of dialect elements were performed uh, and finally the parameter was selected so so what we did in order to utilize in order to reduce this experimentation we developed a model which can predict the accuracy which can predict the uts with higher accuracy or with a good accuracy so what we did we 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 collected the mechanical property data from the literature and we performed a regression and neural network based uh, 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 model then we printed a wall in our facility uh, which is funded by ardb and then we validated to check that error so what we did uh, it can clearly show the error between train and get data uh, for our random forest model so it was able to predict the uts and uh, yield strength in vertical and horizontal direction with quite a good accuracy and similarly the neural network also performed quite well and this is the uh, this is the uh, Uh, wall that we have printed in our facility and we subjected it to characterization by micro hardness and UTS. So our wall uh, uh, wall gave us the UTS of somewhere around 300 and uh, uh, UTS of 500 close to 500, which is quite acceptable acceptable to the design criteria. And and what we did what we did is uh, did we Put the value predicted by our model and the experimental value and we compare. So here you can see the uh, so yes means yield strength the approximation is almost close to equal. Uh, however, in case of in case of uh, uh, UTS the values were slightly like different because. In this case, we have assumed two values, so due to that, this, uh, uh, this difference is coming. But we can definitely minimize it, and we were able to minimize it. And we check the percentage error with the help of our regression and neural network. And what we were able to observe that our uh, random forest here gave us a lesser percentage error range. And uh, so from here, what we were able to do is that our uh, our model was able to predict the yield strength with minimum error and UTS with uh, with an error somewhere range from 20 to 50 percent. Uh, and we we were able to publish this work recently in the month of March. Uh, so, uh, so thank you. This is uh, quite uh, about my work and the area of machine learning work I am exploring. Uh, I hope I I might be able to provide you an insight of the uh, current aspect of machine learning in building and building manufacturing. So now the session is open for the discussion. If you have any answer, you can definitely ask. If you have any question, you can ask please. Any questions, Maria? Maria? क्वेश्चन Uh, you have to basically scale down your data. So if you take a decision tree and another forest model, if you are not doing doing an doing an normalization, you can directly implement that. Because it's a nested research instrument, so it's quite easy to. And also, when you are having uh, 
different different different. As compared to SPM, this is going to be one of the quite quite good. But it completely depend upon the interface and also on the choice of uh, coder. I prefer more working with different and different. This is the. This is all the domains in mechanical engineering. This can give some tries in different different models. The model which is giving you good accuracy, you keep that model with you. If the SPM is giving you good accuracy, you can keep that model with you. It is not a big issue. But first of all, you have to keep your model with all the different algorithms, whether it's SPM and linear regression, polynomial, or SPM, even three or one or four. Test. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, but Sri Hari, uh, Dr. Sri Hari, uh, probably. Uh, uh, the people working in the area of all diagnostics and all, they are more strict about SPM. It is my personal observation. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sir, I'm doing this water. I published one paper in the summer of the regression. During my research and during my work, I did only L25, so there is a response of this paper. Uh, in the textbook data set, uh, that uh, almost uh, each and every experiment is uh, somewhat different, sir. Uh, in that uh, the training the data set is very because the L27 training yeah 27 data set is just a toy data it will give you a good accuracy in every uh, algorithm because it will uh, it will do overfitting because 27 if you divide it into 70 30 uh, 70% of 27 will be training and remaining will be test. So that's a very less data. Mostly we will go for a full factory. This is mainly applicable for large data of data and data set. What we have done, we, we, we have generated our own data or we have uh, taken data from few literature views we have developed. So, uh, so that is there. Uh, uh, if you are up, trying to apply in your work, so uh, you have to generate a data or you can take the data from literature. But if you are taking a data from literature, you have to do too much thing and the data should be authentic because uh, on MRR you might be getting, they, they were getting both in different It's totally different. It's quite tricky. It's quite tricky. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah, come on here. Quizling is not opening. Uh, if you have any queries, just post a question to the question. Yeah. If you have any query, you can ask Thank you, sir. Uh, then I am by uh, Dr. Hello? 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 Am I audible? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, there is a hand raised by uh, uh, Drukha Pastor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mali Padu. No, he is asking about the free spin. No problem. So, Dr. Hakkaraman, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I tried my best. If you have any doubt, uh, uh, they can reach the email. My email is available in the NIT website. Uh, I have one mic. I have one mic. 
uh, it not belongs to the am am we started uh, the camp of the department in our college you no know, we are facing problem with the second layer the first layer we are doing the building the second layer we have to depend upon the system what system you are having we have cmp 2016 what about your control system cooker robot with the front cmp you are from which region no, I'm from NBK, sir. From NBK, sir. Okay, no, Vikram. Vikram. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't know. You have to check with the parameter because we never face that problem. So, but we don't use Chromium. We are we have OTT. Uh, so we, we we have TBS. We have uh, large machines. So we never face that problem. Uh, which material you are working upon in R70? Mm, uh, aluminum. 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 Uh, that wire grade. What is the wire grade? Wire only. Uh, uh, ER grade. So, I think 4 tones. Okay. okay. No, we, we never face that problem. So. Uh, uh, so I'm going for a second layer of melting. It should not melt. So only a CMD claims to be a low skin uh, should not melt. Actually, we installed the last week on the system. Okay, okay. Uh, we, we, we are doing, we, we are able to print a 500 and a We will give it to our students to help on your side. Uh, the setting, setting parameters from the work scholar side. Uh, we don't work in CMD. That is the problem. We have a parallel technology. Mm -hmm. Ragnar is there, na CMD. You probably got it 